Chess Diagnostic. Hello everybody, welcome to the Complete Chess Endgame course. We are on position 17 of the King and Pawn Endings. And we have two more positions after this, so 19 total, and then we're going to move on to Rook Endings. Uh, this is a very classic 3-pawn versus 3-pawn breakthrough, and it's a must-know. All the experts and A players will know this position, and you'll get it every once in a while in a game. Uh, so with white to move, it's actually quite simple. If you want to pause the video now, you can, but you play the middle pawn. Now notice that uh, white's pawns are further advanced, and because of this, he can play g6, and for example, if h takes, there's a breakthrough, if you want to try to guess it, you play f6. Now, if he takes with a G pawn, you play h6, and this pawn's getting through in two moves, and black just doesn't catch up in time. Play the queen to f6, and now we're going to be catching this pawn, and we'll soon be winning all these other pawns. So, let's analyze if he plays a different move. For example, if he takes on h5, well then we just take the pawn, and we're even one move away from queening. Now there's no way for black to get this uh, h-pawn queened in time, and we're also threatening a check on the king and the pawn as well. Now notice this worked because these three pawns are further advanced. So if you get this type of position, you, you'll want to recognize this opportunity and create it for yourself by advancing your pawns as far as possible down the board. So let's go back here. After we play g6, what if f takes? Well, it's the exact same idea, except you have to do it from the opposite side. And now, if the king tries to move back, well, we can quickly evaluate from the rule of the square that the black king will not be able to stop this pawn. And now we've queened, and even though he has three pawns, they're too far back, they're not forward enough to queen, and white wins easily. All right, so just keep in mind that the middle pawn, the g6 move, is the winning move in this position. And after you play this, depending on black's move, you'll play your breakthrough. And this is a very typical idea in king and pawn endings with a lot of pawns. You'll commonly sacrifice all your pawns to get that one queen, and because you queen earlier, you'll just snap up all the other pawns and it's a win. And that's the case for this classic three pawn breakthrough. All right, we're gonna look at it from the black to move side now. All right, so if you're on the black side of this with black to move, the, the benefit is that you're not gonna lose. And there's only one move to prevent you from losing. If you wanna to try to guess it, you can. But because white was gonna play g6, you simply play it yourself. Now, there's still a lot of pitfalls for black and white as well, uh, but otherwise it's actually a draw with black to move if everybody plays correctly. So let's go through the potential pitfalls in this position. Now, if H takes, then black just wants to keep everything symmetrical. He'll take with his H pawn, and now if white plays F6, then black, his main task is to keep the white king away from the black pawns. If black gets too ambitious, for example, trying to go over and attack these pawns, he actually loses. With white going king to b4, he's going to outflank black, win the f7 pawn, and because his f6 pawn is more advanced, he'll actually win by queening sooner. So if black plays king to e5, White comes in, and black may have won a pawn, but white comes in in time with king d7, wins the f7 pawn, and now he queens first. So black needs to be very careful in this position to not be too ambitious. And that's a common theme in a lot of pawn endings, is to not overestimate your own position and undervalue the potential counterplay that the opponent has. So the correct idea is to play king to d4, and black just simply uses the opposition to keep the white king out. Now let's go back to the initial position. After g6, 
if white takes with the f pawn, he actually puts himself at a disadvantage. Now, if he advances the h pawn with h6, then after king to b5, white is actually going to lose because black will get over in time to capture this pawn and this h7 pawn is too far away from the king to actually capture and get the same situation as with the f pawn. So for example, white will try to come over, but it's too late and there's really nothing he can do to prevent black from simply capturing all these pawns. So he needed to realize that he just needs to simply take the pawn instead of h6. He plays f takes g6 and then white needs to be very careful because black is going to win that pawn. There's no way that white can prevent it. So with king to f1 that allows him to gain the opposition once the pawn is taken. And this is where the simpler uh, basic pawn endings build upon the more complicated ones. So why king to f1? Well, if he plays king to f2, then it doesn't really matter. The idea is white needs to be in a position to play king to g3. Uh, king to f1 is a little more accurate, but even if black plays king to f4, if he just takes the pawn, then we play king to g3, and now we have the opposition as white, and we'll prevent black from controlling the square outflanking us and queening his pawn. So this basic ending is one that you need to know, which we analyzed earlier. All right, so let's go back. So king to f1, king to f4, king to g2, and now we have the opposition. So it's a draw either way, but white didn't have to make it complicated for himself. He just simply had to take with the h pawn and try to trick black. So it's many moves ahead. Work on your calculation a little bit. Uh, this black to move side was quite complicated and if you have any questions just leave it in the comments and I'll see you in position 18. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future videos. See you in the future.